Hi guys, Seth Good Games here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be starting a new series called Everything LSPDFR. I'm going to start with showing you how to install LSPDFR, go from plugins, add ons, replacements, everything you basically need to know about LSPDFR, how to get the work, some fix fixes. So, this video is just going to be how to install LSPDFR and some basic requirements like script hook V and script hook community net so that just allows you to load in some different kinds of mods and scripts so if you guys enjoyed this video like always leave a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the video so to start off this little mini series i'm going to be showing you how to install lspdfr and some basic requirements for like plugins whatever else it's just basically something that's good to have in your LSPFR slash GTA folder is whatever you install in the path in the future will most likely need these requirements at some point in the future. So it's good to have them in there just so you're ready for them. So to start off, just go to the first link in the description and it's going to bring you to LSPFR, which will actually, I'll just put in this link right here straight to it. And then you're this is the latest version for the latest GTA 5. So just go ahead and scroll down, or you can hit download right here. Read uh, the requirement if you like. Hit agree and download. And there is a setup exe which may, um, automatically sets it up, but I'm going to show you the manual way because this is easier in my opinion. So go ahead and hit download. Wait for it to download right here. And then while that's downloaded, head to the second. Link in the description is going to be script hook v, and it is for the latest version, of course. And just hit this download button right here. It's going to ask you if you want to save. Make sure you hit save and OK. And then go to the third link. This is going to be script hook uh, v dot net. This is how you use actual scripts, and it sometimes it's requirements for certain mods and scripts. So let's go ahead and go to the latest one. And hit this button right here, the script hook v.net.zip. And you are going to make uh, have to make sure you have RenRunner installed, which a link in the description for that also. And then go ahead and go to the fourth link. This is going to be Rage Native UI. This mod is required for a lot of like uh, EOPs, stuff like that, that has menus built into their mods. So it's just good to have in the future whenever you download something. So just go to the link in the description. It'll be the fourth one. And just hit this download button right here. It'll download real quick. And then you can check. You can see that they're all here. I instantly downloaded them twice. Let me fix that real quick. They're not going to have double of them. <laughs> Sorry about that. So you're going to have LSPDFR manual install. Uh, Ray took native UI, script took V, script took V.net. So those are the four, um, I guess, mods that you're going to be installing at the moment. The so next step would be to locate your GTA 5 main directory. One way would be if you have it through Steam, just go to your Steam, uh, go to your GTA 5 right here, right click, go to properties local files, and browse. So that's one way to do it with Steam. You can see it's right here. Another way would be, of course, just right click in your folders, go to File Explorer, your main drive, and then it's normally under uh, Programs X86. Uh, so I will put in the description a couple of areas your game might be because it's different for DVD, different for Steam, and it's different for Epic Games. So I'll put that in the description if you can't find it. I, and a quick disclaimer, before you do this, I would recommend right-clicking your main uh, GTA 5 folder. Go to More Options and hit Copy. And then I would recommend hit and paste right in the same area, wherever you want to save it, just to keep a backup of your game. It's just good to have, nice to have, whatever. <laughs> so go ahead and go to GTA 5, your main directory. 
and then go back to your download folder and you're going to see lspdfr menu install go and open that renderer you can see all the files in here make sure you hit control a uh, these um hit control and deselect the top two and just drag and drop into your main gta gta directory now if this is your first time installing you won't see this button replace these files in directory um so that's fine if not if you do see it just hit the top button replace and then a quick another disclaimer i would when you drag this over, make sure you're not highlighting a folder. Just make sure you're off to the side. Okay, so once you have that installed, go ahead and go to the next one, which is Rage Native. The same thing, you're just going to drag the top bottom files. Don't worry about these two. Top bottom ones straight directly into your directory. So there you go. Do the same thing for script hook V, but it's under bin. Now here's Something else, there's native trainer in this mod, in the script hook V, just by itself. But I wouldn't recommend this trainer, I don't like it personally. I would recommend using trainer V, which I will be doing a little video how to install that also. So if you want to install this one, go ahead and just drag it in your directory. If not, I will be releasing that video sometime this week. So just select the top two ones, well, the top one and the third one. And drag into your directory and then open up script hook v.net and you want to select all these files right here besides the top two ones and just drag that into your directory also sorry about that so you basically have everything installed i would recommend real quick on lspdfr and double click in this um, configure real quick. So when you double click it, it's gonna uh, show up right here. Just hit next. It'll ask you to look at the license and accept it. Hit show license. Rage hook will pop up real quick. Uh, it tells you to read it basically and it loads. When it, had, when it shows up as set, just hit accept. And then this will ask, this is asking you if you want to change some plugin. Um, change the settings uh, for LSPFR. I would just hit do it for me. It's or you can hit show settings and change it how you would like. Once it's done, it'll show up right here. Just hit OK and it'll close out. Now another thing, real quick, if you wanted to change the key bindings for LSPFR, it's right here under keys.ini in the same LSPFR folder. This is just good to know if you wanted to after playing for a while. Now I would go, the next step is going to be go to the ragehookplugin.exe, which is in your main directory. Right click that. Uh, go to create shortcut. And then I would put that onto your desktop. And then you can exit out of your main directory and your downloads folder. So you have, and then you should have this ragepluginhook.exe shortcut on your desktop. I would recommend also making a shortcut to your desktop of your GTA 5. So you can do that in Steam by right clicking, add, uh, no, manage. So right click, manage, add short desktop shortcut. That'll just throw a, the shortcut to your desktop right there. Now, I don't, I haven't done this. This is a new ish thing, but. To fix a lot of problems, so for Epic Game, DVD, everything else, this will just fix a lot of the problems when uh, loading LSPDFR. I would recommend doing it this way, but to start off, just open the Rage plugin hook so we can get through the initial steps. So the first time installation will ask you to back up the game. Make sure you hit yes. I'll do a quick little backup. And then it's going to load into this um, config file. This console key, I would recommend changing it to some other button because F4 is very common for plugins or script V. I would also recommend changing 
plug in timeout threshold to at least 20,000 or more, I wouldn't go anywhere past 60,000. Go to the plugins tab. And I like to hit, you can mess with these settings, but I like to hit load all plugins and startup. This will make it where you don't have to go back in this menu all the time and select all your plugins. If you just do this, whatever you put into your game will automatically load. A fast sentence, don't worry about that. Uh, unless you want to disable this. If you enable this, it makes it where it just loads GTA 5 for the normal loading screen, basically. But if you disable it, it will show you the text on basically how your game is loading. I I would recommend just unchecking it. It's better, I think. And then right here, you don't have to worry about any of this. And you just hit save and launch. And then this show up to say okay. Now we're not going to launch the game, so hit exit right there. That's not That's going to stop the game from launching. This is how you should launch the game every time. To, to solve any kind of problem you're going to have with LSPFR. So I would recommend what you should do is this. Uh, you have the shortcut of GTA 5 and you have the shortcut of Rage Hook. Let's go ahead and open GTA 5 first. Now this is my first time opening it because I reinstalled the game. So it's going to take a moment. But just let the game launch. And once you get to the main menu after the first like initial 10 20 seconds of intro where it says settings exit uh, story mode just pause right there so i'm gonna stop talking and i'll be right back when we get to that screen Alrighty, so this is the page you're looking for uh, just sit right here and go ahead and tab out to your desktop so now we're at the desktop, GTA 5 is loading in the background, well it's sitting there in the background. This is the time you want to open Rage plugin hook. So just double click it, it'll run, you can see that it's doing its thing, it's hooking up to the game, and there you go. So just go off to the side, you go back to your GTA 5 right here, tab in, and then hit load story mode. And you can see that it's loading right hook. This is just the simplest way to do it. If you have some kind of EMB in or some kind of graphics mod, sometimes if you just launch it through Rage immediately, it won't work or break. So I just recommend doing this every time. It solves a lot of problems. So we're going to load in the game so you can see that everything's working well. And I'll be right back. Alrighty, so you can see that we loaded in. It's gonna ask you. I mean, <laughs> it's not gonna ask you anything. Well, it did pop up to LSPFR, but you can look on the map and you can actually see the little badges. That means LSPDFR did work. So you can see the badges that say Police Station. Uh, basically, what you're gonna want to do is head to one of them. So I don't have any trainer installed real quick, so I'm going to have to drive over there. So I'm going to drive over there, and I'll see you when I get there. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us. Alrighty, so I'm here. Don't worry about my driving. <laughs> so just go to the nearest station that you spawn by or whatever else and just walk up to the door and it'll say press E to enter the police station, whatever one you're at. Hit E on the doors, it'll load uh, LSPFR, load you into the station. So 
So once you get in, let's say, um, go on duty, hit enter. And it, when it's your first time ever loading into the game, it will load in the game and load into LSPDFR. It's going to ask you to make a character. So it's the same GTA Online character maker, basically. So just go ahead and make a character real quick. There's a bunch of options. You can make them look exactly like you for the most part. But for now, I'm just going to set whoever this is and actually keep their name. <laughs> So after you're done making the character, it'll show right here, and this you can either create another one or hit use and hit enter on their name or your name, whatever else. So it's gonna load into back to the station with your new character, and you only have to do this once, so that's always good. Just have to do it one time, have a character, and once you show up in game, once you come back to the station. It will just show up to this menu right here after you hit on duty. So you can go ahead and go off duty if you like. But I would recommend you just go to police locker. Go to outfit. And there's your cop outfit. And then. Okay. Disappeared. Make sure you hit confirm. <laughs> police garage. If you hit that it will bring you to the cars. Which I don't have anything installed. So it's just basic. But you can change the model right here, the livery, um, the engine effects, everything else. Not effects, uh, modifications. Just hit select and continue. I did not mean to select a van, but okay. So we're actually loaded in, everything will tell you on patrol. And this is basic LSPDFR, just all playing by itself. I will throw a quick uh, little thing that you guys will be good to know. You can skip going to the station completely if you, whatever button you set the the second config to. So it's defaultly F4. It'll bring you to the rage com control panel. You can actually just hit force duty. So you can type in force and then hit tab. So if you hit force duty, it will set you straight to going on duty. It will put you in uniform. But I would not recommend doing this the first time. You need to do this. This is what you can do the second couple times. So. That's just a quick little thing. Quick little thing that's good to know. So I am going to end the video here. If you guys have any questions. Go ahead and leave a comment. But like always. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.